Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at the March 2024 Case Study 2 for Unit 1. It begins on page number 11, so let's get into it. I'll read each paragraph and then I'll analyse it for you. Jade is 23, and after graduating from university with a degree in geography, she has worked in various roles. Six months ago, Jade secured a job in the travel industry working for a company that promotes exclusive travel destinations across the world. Jade currently earns £32,000 plus bonuses. So, the fact she's 23 means that Jade is at the young adult stage of the life cycle. She secured a job in the travel industry, which often has many perks to it. She earns £32,000, which means roughly around £2,666 per month plus bonuses. Jade works in the marketing department from her office in London, two days a week, or working from home, three days a week, in her rented flat, which she shares with two friends. Jade does not drive and uses the London Underground to travel to work. Once a month, Jade's employers fly her to a destination that they want to promote to their high-income customers. Jade stays there for a few days, then spends the rest of the month helping to design the marketing literature for this exclusive holiday. So she works in the marketing department, which means she's responsible for carrying out market research, developing marketing mix, uh, the price product promotion and place, for example. She shares her flat with two friends, which presumably means that the bills for that flat are also shared. She doesn't drive, which of course means that there's a reduced cost uh, from not having to pay out for car insurance, for example. But of course she does use the London Underground. The third paragraph begins, Jade has always maintained and been in control of her budget, ensuring that she does not overspend and has never gone into her overdraft since university. Jade has an overdraft limit of £100. If she is short of money leading up to payday, she limits her spending. Jade has no outstanding debt except for her student loan, which she is repaying. So she does not overspend. This is a sustainable way of dealing with finances. Her overdraft limit is £100, which we could say is a rather small limit at presently. Now, Jade limits her spending if she is short of money leading up to payday. This might, of course, not always be possible if she does have uh, uh, commitments or there are external factors uh, causing her spending to go up in a particular month. She has no outstanding debt except for her student loan. And, of course, student loans are generally paid through her employer, so she wouldn't have to worry about making separate payments off her own back for that. On a recent trip to the Seychelles, Jade had the opportunity to extend her work trip and take some personal holiday time. However, she would have had to pay an additional £500, which she did not have. On her return, Jade could see the benefit of having a small savings pot in case she had another offer like this in the future. So the Seychelles is an island chain in the Indian Ocean and she obviously needed an additional £500. She could see the benefit of having a sore small savings pot in case she had another offer like this in the future. Later on in the case study we're going to look at potential borrowing as well so it might be worth at this stage just knowing the benefits and the drawbacks of savings versus borrowing. Fifth paragraph. Jade has started to review her budget and has produced a new budget based on her current income and expenditure, not including her possible bonuses. She recognises that she is in a good financial position now as she only has a student loan to repay. She has also calculated that after her mandatory, essential and discretionary expenditure, she has £500 per month at her disposal. So it's important to know these different spending types, mandatory, essential and discretionary. And the fact she has £500 per month at her disposal, this essentially means her disposable income. Jade feels that her bank could help more with what she wants to achieve. She has been with the same bank since she started university, but has never visited a branch, and feels that her current banking app is quite limited.
She would like to investigate some online banks, their mobile apps, and how they can help her to generate more savings. So the fact that she's never actually visited a branch suggests, and we'll come on later in the case study to seeing different options she's looking at, but it suggests that she does not need this feature in the future. She feels that her current banking app is quite limited, and apps released by challenger banks are particularly effective. Challenger banks being new banks on the block, if you like, banks like Monzo and Starling, for example. So that suggests that her current bank is perhaps an old high street bank. Let's turn to page number 12. So, page number 12 is the start of the research section. And the research section is all about providing you with background and information so that you can effectively answer the questions set in the exam. It begins, what are online bank accounts? Online or digital bank accounts are a type of current account that can be opened and managed entirely online or through a smartphone app. You won't be able to visit a branch because the institutions that provide them exist entirely online. So the fact you can do them through a smartphone app is suitable for Jade as she has never actually visited a branch. When you open a current account with a digital bank, you'll be able to access all the same services you would from a high street bank account, just from your phone in your own time, which of course makes managing these accounts rather convenient. Is an online bank account right for me? If you want to open and manage your current account with a smartphone app, an online bank account could be a good fit for your needs. What can I do through the online banking app? Well, you can carry out all day-to-day -day banking tasks you'd expect from a current account through the online bank's app, including setting up and managing direct debits or standing orders, sending and receiving money, updating personal details, and opening and managing an overdraft. So all of the things you can generally do at a branch, you can pretty much do on an app as well. Many of the apps offered by digital banks also come with added tools and functionalities that could make it easier to manage your money, such as in-app saving pots, budgeting tools, and personal payment links that allow you to get paid without actually giving out bank details. Now, the fact that they offer in-app saving pots suits Jade's aims at present, but of course you never know what might happen in the future and potentially she might require face-to-face -face services or indeed to speak to a branch manager. And of course if she chooses an online only bank account then this would generally not be possible. Do online bank accounts come with an overdraft? Some will offer this facility, but as with all borrowing, whether you are eligible to use this facility will depend on your credit history. So of course, some online bank accounts offer overdrafts. Jade currently has a £100 overdraft, but has not actually used it since uni, and is, she's an effective budgeter, so it's likely that she will not need a huge overdraft. Let's turn to page 13. Typically, you will need to apply for an overdraft separately once you have opened the bank account. How do I open an online bank account? Opening an online bank account is usually very quick. Depending on the account, you can open it online or by downloading the provider's app from the app or Google Play Store. So, we can assume that Jade is internet literate based upon her age and her job role, so of course opening an online bank account should be no problem for her. You'll be prompted to enter the same personal details you would when opening a traditional current account. These details include your full name, date of birth, address, contact number and employment status. You must also have a valid form of photo ID, such as a passport or a driving license, to hand so the account provider can verify your identity. Now whilst Jade doesn't drive, we can assume she has a valid passport because of her job role. Can I switch online bank accounts? Yes, you can switch to a different online bank account whenever you want. Like their traditional counterparts, the majority of online bank accounts are covered by the current account switch service. 
This is an effective and convenient switch service, uh, which essentially provides you with the uh, opportunity to switch, usually within seven days, that is the seven day switch guarantee, and it switches all of your direct debits, your standing orders, etc. As I said, usually within seven days, which is extremely convenient. The service automatically moves your incoming and your outgoing payments over to the new account, and it closes the old one. Now the source for that information is Forbes.com, and Forbes is, Forbes is an American business magazine. The next article begins Top App-Based Bank Accounts. To get your head around app-based banking, it helps to know the following. 1. The apps really help you know where your money's going. Many rely on them to stick to a budget. Although these apps aren't solely meant for budgeting, the main ones we feature in this guide can really help you to keep your finances in check. So it's worth considering at this point how beneficial these new app-based banking services are compared to traditional accounts. Let's turn to page 14. They give real-time notifications when you spend or save. So, for example, if you bought something for £5 in Boots, you'd get an instant notification on your phone telling you what you've spent. Whilst this is very useful in itself, it's also useful for security purposes. Another feature they have is to give you insights into your spending habits. This means you'll easily be able to see how much you can spend in a particular shop each month, or sorry, how much you do spend in a particular shop each month, or more generally, how much you spend on entertainment or travel. Now it's useful, this feature, to support Jade's budgeting. Then we move on to point two. Like any other bank, your money is protected up to £85,000 in an app-based account. When it comes to your finances, you want to be sure your money is safe. So it is important to understand how your money is protected. UK regulated banks have Financial Services Compensation Scheme, or FSCS, protection. This covers up to £85,000 of your money in the unlikely event of a bank going bankrupt. So like any other bank, the money in an app-based bank is also protected. And of course, even though it's 85000 for an individual, it's worth knowing that if it's in a joint account, it's Double that, essentially, up to £170,000 worth of FSCS protection. Now, the apps below, Starling, Chase and Monzo, are fully regulated UK banks and are therefore covered by the FSCS, though Chase's protection is shared with JP Morgan. This means your money is protected in the same way as it would be with a big traditional bank such as Barclays, HSB, Lloyds or NatWest, and this will give Jade peace of mind. The third point, app-based accounts are cool and high-tech, but you can get, often, better rewards elsewhere. Therefore, it is worth that Jade shops around to assess what alternatives are on offer. A good way to do this is potentially through a price comparison website, uh, because, of course, she wants to get the best return on her savings and the best features. The fourth bullet point reads, want one of these accounts? You'll still need to pass a credit check. Now, we don't have any actual information in relation to Jade's credit rating, so we may be provided with more in the additional information. Point five, digital banking is secure, but it's still worth being careful. It's important for Jade to remain alert and aware of scams and or phishing attempts. So what are the top app-based bank accounts? Well, at the bottom of page 14, we begin with Starling Bank. Useful spending notifications, great for budgeting and top for overseas use. The fact that it's for overseas use it would be, of course, very important for Jade. Starling Bank gives real-time notifications when you use your debit card, insights into your spending and lets you set up savings goals, which of course is one of Jade's aims. You also earn a very small amount of in-credit interest. This is a nice perk, but it's potentially likely to be quite insignificant due to the amount saved within the account. There are no fees for spending or cash withdrawals abroad, therefore making it a top-pick debit card overseas.
This is significant and a big benefit for Jade, who is of course a regular traveller. Let's turn to page 15. The service rating of the Starling Bank account is 91%, which is great. This is the second place out of the three we're going to be looking at, just behind Chase. Overseas fees, there are none, which once again is the same as Chase. In credit interest, the AER is 0.05%, up to 85,000. As I said earlier, it's a nice perk, but it's still less than Chase. How can we pay into the account? Well, Jade can put cash in at any post office, and she can pay in checks via either the app or the post. This really is a unique selling point of Starling. The fact that you can pay cash in at any post office, but say, saying that, potentially she might not need to do so. Arranged overdraft cost. The AER is 15, 25 or 35 percent. Now this is the lowest of the options in which this facility is offered. The unarranged overdraft cost, well there is no option for an unarranged overdraft cost, but it's important to note that Jade is very unlikely to use an unarranged overdraft, um, making this argument relatively insignificant. Now the app, you can get it on iOS or Android, and it's rated 4.9 out of 5 on iOS and 4.8 out of 5 on Android. This is the highest rating out of the three potential options. Next, we're going to look at Chase. Chase offers 1% cash back on purchases and no fees to spend or withdraw cash abroad. The 1% cash back is a real nice perk. For example, she can get that cash back potentially on her London Underground spending. And of course, the fact that there's no fees to spend or withdraw cash abroad is of course very attractive given Jade's role. The app-only Chase current account gives a top rate of cash back on most spending. Similar to the point in the first bullet point, the uh, cash back could be a very good perk, but Jade should check which spending it actually applies to. For example, it might apply to a London Underground spending, it may not. You can also set up its roundup feature, which rounds all purchases up to the nearest £1, with the difference auto-saved into a separate account, paying 5%. For example, spend £1.45 and 55p is transferred. Just like the 1% cashback, this is a nice perk and a nice idea, although some might argue that it's slightly gimmicky, given the benefit is likely to be quite minimal. That said, it is another way for Jade to save. Um, of course, that is one of her aims. You can create up to 20 extra accounts, and there's also a monthly spending overview. Great for helping to manage your money. This is superb for supporting Jade's budgeting. She could even put money for her holiday spends, for example, into another account. And she say she was saving for a car, she could put it into an extra account as well. So there's a great opportunity here to really budget hard. The service rating of Chase is 94%, it's the best out of the three, and there are no overseas fees, same as Starling, so a really good benefit. The in-credit interest, well, it's 3% on £500,000 via its linked savings account, plus 5% on small amounts saved in the Roundup account. This is definitely the best out of the three options. So how can we pay in? Well, this is actually limiting. The Chase accounts does not enable users to actually pay in cash. Uh, so as I said, it could be limiting, but it really depends on Jade's situation. We don't know how often she may decide to pay in cash. Arranged overdraft cost? Well, overdrafts are not available with the Chase. This is potentially quite limiting, although not a significant point, we'd say, as Jade has not actually used her overdraft facility since university. But it might be useful in emergencies. That said, of course, if she does build up a contingency fund in the form of savings, perhaps her overdraft becomes less significant. 
the arranged overdraft cost is not available and the unarranged overdraft cost of course is not available. Now the app is rated 4.9 out of 5 on iOS just like Starlings but on Android it's actually rated just 4.1 out of 5. This is actually the lowest rated on Android out of the three options that Jade has available to her and which are mentioned in this Money Saving Expert article. So let's move on then to page 16, Monzo. Monzo helps you budget and also offers savings accounts with partner banks. Now the fact that you can get savings accounts with partner banks, and these are quite, uh, there would be quite a number of partner banks, is a big unique selling point of Monzo. And it's not an not a option that the other two offer. Monzo has similar features to Starlink, real-time spending notifications and insights into where you are spending making it ideal for budgeting or reducing unnecessary expenditure. It's also good for overseas use, particularly if you won't withdraw cash or you will only, you will only get small amounts. This potentially might be suitable for the everyday person who goes on holiday once or twice a year, but for someone like Jade who spends a significant amount of time out of the country, this could be limiting because she's a regular traveller. The dis difference comes with savings. As well as letting you set up pots, Monzo lets you move savings to an account with a partner bank so you get decent interest, though topic savings usually have better rates. As we said, this is a real unique selling point of this potential um, account. In fact, partner banks include the Bank of Scotland, Barclays, Lloyds, and ironically, it actually includes Chase and Starling as well. So that potentially makes Monzo um, quite, a, quite a unique property proposition and the topic savings however usually have better rates this essentially means that saving specific accounts may be better for getting a larger return however when it comes to the service rating it's just 87 percent which sounds high but it's actually the lowest out of these three options uh, the overseas fees whilst there's none on spending uh, though Worldwide ATM withdrawals only a fee free up to two hundred pounds within any thirty day period, and it's three percent fee afterwards. So by far the worst of the three in this respect. There's no in credit interest like there are with other options, and in terms of paying in, well, you can pay cash in at any pay point, but it's important for Jade to take into account there is a one percent what's like one pound fee with this and you can pay checks in via post so it's not as good as the starting option in that respect in which you can pay in checks via the app arranged overdraft cost well the AER is 19 29 or 39 percent and the unarranged overdraft cost is as above if applicable or 39 percent with a maximum of 15 pounds 50 per month now this is not as good as starling although it's important to note that chase doesn't offer an overdraft facility at all it says to get the app you can get it on ios and you can get it on Android. It's rated 4.9 out of 5 on iOS and Android is rated 4.7. Now this is better than Chase and slightly worse than Starling. The source for this information was moneysavingexpert.com and actually Money Saving Expert was founded by a guy called Martin Lewis and it provides fantastic money advice well worth checking out. So, the next videos will be looking at some model answers, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.